Hey guys, welcome back to the Kubernetes series. When we have so many Kubernetes resources of multiple applications, it's tough to maintain those resources. To avoid this issue, there should be a way to organize those resources to help different projects, teams or customers to share a single Kubernetes cluster. That's where Kubernetes namespaces comes into picture. In this video, we will be looking at what is a namespace and the need of organizing Kubernetes resources followed by how we can organize those resources based on different factors using namespaces. So without any further delay, let's get started. So far we have created pods, replica sets, deployments, services and ingress and we will be creating many other resources like config maps, secrets, etc. And also we will be creating Kubernetes resources for multiple applications in the same cluster. When we have multiple resources of multiple applications, there should be a way to organize them for various reasons. This organizing can be done with namespaces. Namespaces are a way to organize clusters into virtual subclusters. So we will be creating our resources in these namespaces instead of creating them all in one namespace. Any number of namespaces are supported within a cluster and each namespace is logically separated from others but they can communicate with each other. Let us see when do we need namespaces before getting into action. Let's say we define our service with the name todo api service and it's working perfectly fine. But if someone else also uses the same name for their services, our service gets overridden and our application obviously breaks. This is because we cannot use same name for two different resources in a single namespace. If we have separate namespaces, then we can have the same name for two different resources in different namespaces. This way teams can reuse the same resource names in different workspaces without any problem. And also, if you make any modifications to one resource, it will not affect other resource. Let's look at another use case where we need namespaces. Let's say employees of different roles, namely developer and admin are using our Kubernetes cluster. And let's assume we have two different namespaces, dev and prod in single cluster. Everyone can create or modify resources in dev namespace but we cannot and should not give that freedom for prod namespaces as things might break for applications which are live. So we limit users and processes to certain namespaces. This can ensure that only authorized users have access to resources in a given namespace. Namespaces also help us in limiting the resources for different applications. Let's say we have two teams and they are deploying their applications in the same namespace. Two applications are running great in single namespace. But because of memory leaks, app 1 started using more and more memory and app 2 is becoming slow because of less memory available for its use. This can be avoided with namespaces. We can run these two apps in a different namespaces by defining resource quotas for CPU and memory utilization. This can ensure that every project or namespace has the resources it needs to run. If you remember, we already looked at one namespace in the ingress session of this series. That's the classic example. All the resources related to Nginx ingress are created in a separate namespace. When we create Kubernetes cluster, we get four default namespaces default, kube node lease, kube public, and kube system. Let's look at these namespaces one by one. By default, all the resources created in the Kubernetes cluster are created in the default namespace if we don't specify explicitly. So, whatever the resources created so far, like Nginx deployment, Nginx service, Nginx ingress rule should be in default namespace as we nowhere mentioned in which namespace those should get created. And the next namespace is kube node lease. You remember in the introduction to Kubernetes session we discussed that if a node goes down in a cluster, the pods in that node will be recreated in a different LD node. How does Kubernetes know which node went down? 
Lease objects in the cube node lease namespace helps for that. Every node will be having a lease object associated. These lease objects sends heartbeats to the control plane to help our cluster determine the availability of each node and to take action when failures are detected. And each node has an associated lease object. And the third namespace is cube public. This namespace is used for public resources and not recommended for use by users. This namespace is open to all users with read-only access. Cube public namespace reserved for cluster usage if any resources should be visible or reachable throughout the whole cluster. And the last namespace is cube system. This is the namespace for objects created by Kubernetes control plane. And of course, we can create our own namespaces too. Now let's look at Kubernetes namespaces in action. This is the state of our cluster. We have the resources related to Nginx and to-do applications in the same namespace. And also we have Nginx ingress controller resources that we created in the ingress session of this series. Now let's try to create two namespaces, Nginx and to-do. And we will be moving all the resources related to Nginx to Nginx namespace and all the resources related to to-do UI and to-do API into to do namespace. So let's start by creating namespace. Namespaces can be created in two ways. The first approach is using kubectl. kubectl create namespace and the name of our namespace. Let's give it as nginx. So basically we are creating a namespace with the name nginx. Enter. Perfect. Our namespace is created. We can list down the namespaces with kubectl get namespaces. As you can see, we have four default namespaces as we discussed default, cube node lease, cube public, and cube system. And this is the namespace we just created. And this was the namespace that was created when we installed Nginx Ingress Controller. And as we discussed in our previous sections, it's always recommended to go with config files instead of using kubectl for better tracking and maintenance. So let's create the namespace with the config file by creating a new file in VS Code. So new file nginx namespace.yaml. Just like any other Kubernetes resource, namespace is also a Kubernetes resource and we need API version kind and metadata to create the namespace. Remember, spec is optional for the namespace. So we can find out this information with kubectl api resources grep namespace. As you can see, this is the API version and this is the short name for the namespace and this is the kind. Let's fill out this information. V1 and in the metadata, let's give the name name as nginx that's it we are good to apply this configuration file let's go to terminal kubectl apply iphone f nginx iphone namespace dot yaml this is the error because we already created nginx namespace with kubectl command and now we are trying to create with the kubectl apply so let's try to delete the namespace that we created and try to reapply so to delete a namespace, just like any other Kubernetes resource, kubectl delete namespace or just ns because ns is the short name for the namespace and the name of our namespace which is nginx. There you go, our namespace is deleted and we can confirm that with kubectl get namespace and as you can see the nginx namespace is not present here. And let's try to reapply our namespace config file. Perfect, our namespace is created. And let's try to get our namespaces available in our cluster. And Nginx namespace is created. In the same way, let's try to create the to do namespace. So I'm copy pasting the same file and renaming the file to to do namespace.yaml and changing the name of the namespace to to do. Save it. And let's try to apply this.
kubectl apply iphone f to do iphone namespace dot yaml the to do namespace is also created whatever the resources we created so far are created in the default namespace this is because when we created these resources we never mentioned in which namespace they should get created that's the reason all these resources are created in the default namespace by default now let us create these resources in their respective namespace to create a resource in a specific namespace instead of in default namespace all we need to do is specify the namespace in the metadata section of the resource so here in the metadata all we need to do is specify the namespace in which this resource should get created so i want this nginx deployment to be created in the nginx namespace save it and apply it kubectl apply iphone f nginx iphone deployment dot yaml as you can see the deployment is created there's one thing to note here the nginx deployment is created but as you can see this deployment was already there before applying this file so why did it create again it should update it right generally so this is because we are creating this resource in a different namespace and the previous deployment was in default namespace so this is how kubernetes resources are isolated in different namespaces a resource modified or created in a different namespace will not affect the resources in a different namespace so now let's try to get all the resources kubectl get all as you can see we have only one deployment we should have two deployments right one is in the default namespace and the other one is in the nginx namespace the reason why it's not showing up here is when we execute kubectl get all it gets the resources only in the default namespace if you want to get the resources from a different namespace we should specify that with iphone yen and the name of the namespace which is nginx so here what we are asking to kubernetes cluster is get me all the resources from the nginx namespace enter as you can see we got the nginx deployment if we want to get all the resources from the all namespaces we should specify that with iphone iphone all iphone namespaces so this will get the resources from the all namespaces so as you can see we have two nginx deployments one is in the nginx namespace and the other one is in the default namespace and there's a shortcut to this all namespaces flag just iphone capital a this should also give the same response you remember we use this iphone n flag in the ingress section too so let's move other resources also to this namespace so let's move nginx service also to nginx namespace namespace nginx let's go here and apply kubectl apply iphone f yes. nginx iphone service dot yaml and the nginx service is created so let's get those resources with kubectl get all iphone n nginx as you can see the nginx service is created so let's say we are working actively on this nginx application so it's a pain to give iphone n nginx for all the commands we are working on if we don't give it it will get the resources from the default namespace because by default default namespace is the current active namespace but we can change the current active namespace for that you can use a tool something like kubeness but let's try to do it with the kubectl itself kubectl config set context iphone iphone current iphone iphone namespace and the name of the namespace which is nginx so the current cluster is modified so now let's try to list down the resources without specifying namespace kubectl get all as you can see we got the resources from the nginx namespace instead of from the default namespace because our current active namespace is nginx so let's move to do resources also to to do namespace you can to do uiapi.yaml and the name is as let's do the same thing for all the to do resources perfect let's apply this kubectl apply 
f to do u ui ap.yaml perfect all our to do resources are created in the to do namespace now well now our resources are organized but how do they communicate let's see that by accessing to do service from the nginx pod so kubectl get all let's try to get into the nginx pod kubectl exec iphone it pod name iphone iphone sh so now we are in the nginx pod now let's try to access our to do api service from this nginx pod so curl to do iphone api iphone service and it is running on 8080 port slash api slash to do's enter as you can see could not resolve host but if you remember this worked in the services section of the kubernetes this was because all the resources were in the same namespace now nginx is in a different namespace and to do api service is in a different namespace so to access a service which is in a different namespace we should give the namespace here so dot to do as kubernetes exposed their endpoint using a common dns pattern which looks like name of the service and the name of the namespace again dot spc dot cluster dot local as you can see we got the to do item but we don't need to give dot spc dot cluster dot local as DNS will automatically resolve to the full address. If your resources are in the same namespace, you don't even need to give the dot namespace also. Enter. As you can see, we got the list of to-do items. So to access a service which is in a different namespace, we need to append the namespace to the service. And it's advised that if you have very few resources, then just use the default namespace. And when you have multiple teams, it's advised to use separate namespace for dev and production environments. In fact, each team can use their own namespace. And for the larger companies, each team should use their own namespace with role-based access control and resource quotas. Don't worry, we will be looking at how to restrict access to the namespaces and how to add resource limits to the namespace in the coming sections. And for enterprise companies, multiple clusters are advised. And as we discussed, we can delete a namespace with kubectl delete namespace and the name of the namespace. Please note that deleting a namespace will delete all the resources in that namespace. So we should be very careful when deleting a namespace. That's all about namespaces. I hope you thoroughly enjoyed it. My name is Pavan Iltepu and I thank you very much for watching this video. If you liked it, please share it with your friends and do not forget to subscribe to my channel to not miss any updates.